we together. Know this was, is we're we're both going there's... down together if we're not right. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why the sun rises and sets at a different time every single day throughout the year? Every day, the sun rises and sets just a few minutes earlier or later, depending on what time of year it is. And it all has to do with the orbital geometry and the velocity with which the Earth travels around the sun. So I went out to the streets of Savannah, Georgia, and I asked a few people if they knew the reason behind this phenomenon. Why does the sun rise and set at a different time every single day? <laughs> um. Uh, because the axis is yeah isn't it just because the axis of rotation and the way tilted. that it yeah the way that it moves like during different times of the year because the earth is tilting at all times depending upon the seasons because we are constantly uh like the earth is rotating and we are set at different axes depending on the seasons well it's because different angles of the earth versus the sun be something to do with like the tilt of the earth and then in combination with where we are in our rotation around the sun. A lot of people thought that the tilt of the axis is what caused the sun to rise at a different time every day, but that's just a small part of it. There's a larger factor to this phenomenon. You see, the earth's orbit isn't a perfect circle. It's just a tiny bit squished. Because of this elliptical orbit, the earth comes closer to the sun at one point of the year and it's farthest from the sun at another point of the year. Our orbit is not exactly circular. It's kind of oblong. Yeah. So as it goes out and it, and it comes back in, so it changes that position, almost like a track. When it's closest, we call that perihelion. And when it's farthest, we call that aphelion. As Earth approaches perihelion, it's starting to travel faster because it's getting closer to the sun. And as it's leaving perihelion and going towards aphelion, it's starting to slow down its orbit. When it's traveling faster, the rotation of the Earth actually has to turn a little bit farther every single day. And it's this added bit of rotation that actually causes the sun to rise a little bit later in the morning. As the Earth passes perihelion and goes towards aphelion, it's slowing down in its orbit. As it slows down in its orbit, the Earth doesn't have to rotate as far for the sun to rise the next day. And this actually causes the sun to rise earlier and earlier. Knowing all of this information, I asked people when they thought perihelion and aphelion happened. When do you think perihelion happens? When do you think we're closest to the sun? Winter. In the summer. So like June? So summertime? Yes. Yeah, yeah, summertime. No. Right? No, because seasons have to do with the tilt. Well, when you're closest, it's going to be like the middle of summer, the apex of summer, and then the farthest away will be like the apex of winter. Uh, in June, won't it be? Or in July? That's <laughs> during the winter time, if, if I can re remember my, uh, my science. Yeah. <laughs> when I asked people when they thought perihelion happened and when aphelion happened, a lot of them were thinking in terms of the northern hemisphere because that's where we in the Northern Hemisphere spend most of our lives. Now, perihelion actually happens on or around January 3rd, and that date kind of slips one day every 60 years or so. And aphelion happens just around July 6th every single year, but again, that's slipping as the years go on. This delay in perihelion and aphelion is actually caused by the precession of Earth's orbit. Not only is Earth orbiting the sun and rotating on its axis, but the Earth's orbit itself is shifting around the sun too. And it's this pivoting of the orbital axis that actually causes perihelion and aphelion to slip later into the year. So knowing this information, I asked people what they thought the definition of a solstice was. That is, why is June 21st the longest day in the Northern Hemisphere's summer? And why is December 21st the shortest day of the Northern Hemisphere's winter? What makes December 21st the shortest day of the year? Um, oh, good one. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't. Um. Because it would be the furthest points away, or the like the closest points. I mean, I like know the length of sunlight exposure. Yeah. And the tilt is the sun rays are hitting it in a certain direction, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're gonna have just more sun since you're tilted in a certain way, correct? Yes close yes that's an effect of 
what the actual answer is. It turns out the Earth's axis isn't always pointing towards the sun. It actually kind of moves sideways in its orbit. In the Northern Hemisphere on June 21st, the Earth's axis is pointing directly at the sun. But as it moves forward through the year, it leaves the sun further and further off to the side at a greater angle. And so the sun appears lower and lower in the sky every day after that. So I asked people a sort of trick question. Which summer do you think is longer? The Northern Hemisphere summer or the Southern Hemisphere summer? One of them is longer by about a week. Don't say it. Don't tell me what you think. Okay. They should be the same, aren't they? Nope. They, there is really? about a week difference between them. <laughs> I think it's going to be the southern, uh, southern, southern longer. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I want to, I want to say the I southern. Say the southern. I would say probably the, the, southern. the southern. 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 I would think northern. Huh. Okay, so it's probably not what you would intuitively right. think. We would, we would like think the, the southern. Well, interview. true. Once the southern, so even when you get away. The northern, then, because I would like to say the southern, but. Well, it's probably the northern. I'd say the southern. I'd say the northern. So it would be longer for the southern hum hemisphere. No. Oh man, I had a 50-50 shot. Is that no? No. Oh, <laughs> it's you on the right the track. Reasons, okay. but the wrong <laughs> I didn't know that for any other reason <laughs> but, uh, than that everything seems to be <laughs> not what you think it is. So it's actually 186 days from March, the fruit star of spring to the start of fall. Okay. The start of fall through winter to the start of spring is actually 179 days. Really? Yeah. So, oh wow, that's so cool. I thought they were exactly equal. The reason for this is something that we already discussed. When the earth is moving toward perihelion, it's traveling faster. It also has a longer period of rotation before it faces the sun again. Whereas as it's leaving perihelion and traveling towards aphelion, the Earth is moving slower in its orbit and doesn't take as long for one period of rotation. So we're moving slower and accumulating more days throughout those seasons. Whereas as we're approaching perihelion, we're moving faster and accumulating fewer days. And that results in about a week difference between the northern summer and the southern summer. So there you have it. That's why the sun rises and sets at a different time every single day. It's all a combination of the Earth's orbital path, velocity, and tilt. Something I never would have known. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never I, see I all didn't that. know all that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So it's, it's it's cool. Very, very cool. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know any of that. Well, you are, I have to say, you've already made me think about uh, a few things, and I appreciate that. That's yeah. kind of neat. Thank you. Yeah. That's Ladies very okay. interesting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Learning stuff. Mm -hmm. Science. Science. Yeah. Science. <laughs> okay. On average. Cool. <laughs> okay. That's everything. Thank you. That's impressive. Yeah. I learned none of this in school. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> so I'm learning stuff that I didn't even learn in school. I just wanted to thank everyone who agreed to stop and do these interviews on the side of the street. You guys were awesome and I had so much fun talking with all of you. It's kind of fun just to see you know, what people do and don't know and it was an educational experience every single time. And I just wanted to apologize to these two ladies because they were the very first people I interviewed. But I forgot to turn the microphone on and I didn't realize this until after they left but they had a great interview, they were so nice and you know, it was just an awesome time with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you could just hit that subscribe button uh, to see weekly videos every single Wednesday. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I will be posting both of those links in my description. And also remember, uh, if you purchase my books or any of the t-shirts, 50% of those profits get donated to STEM and environmental conservation programs. And on another note, if you guys could go check out my Patreon page and uh, read through some of the stuff that you see there and consider supporting me, uh, it would be an awesome help because, you know, all this takes money uh, to do the demonstrations, to get the gas in the parking, and also to travel around as much as I do for these videos now. So even just a couple dollars would go a really long way. So thank you again, and until next week, here's to all your endeavors.